Hi, I'm Allie with Potomac Beach. Join me as I create this nice kind of intro to knotting natural amber chip necklace. We're gonna be knotting and knotting and knotting with some silk cord, and I'm gonna show you some simple little tips and tricks how to do so. If you need any materials, remember that underneath the video, there is a description. And if you hit those lines or that show more button, we'll give you links to all the supplies that are used to create this piece. Gather up your supplies and let's get ready to get started. So the very first thing to do with this natural amber necklace is to take our silk thread, which I'm using Griffin beading silk in size six, off the actual card and out of the package. When you take it off the card, there is a needle, a twisted needle that is attached to the end. You wanna remove the whole silk off the cord and I'm kind of stretching it out with my fingers as I'm removing it, because it is silk, it's a natural fiber, it will stretch slightly. Some people will wet the entire cord, let it hang. Because of the style of necklace that I'm doing, I'm not worrying about that. Keep your card in case you have any left over of any of your projects that you have knotting material. When you get to the end, you'll notice sometimes that it's starting to fray apart. It's not like a beading um, cord or a thread where it has that coating on it. It's that natural silk and it's just twisted together. So we're gonna stop it from fraying by simply tying a knot at the end of the cord. From there, again, I'm gonna kind of pull it through my fingers, just tugging on it, getting rid of those kinks a little bit, stretching it, but we're gonna be going in and we are going to be knotting it in between our uh, crystals and our natural amber chips. So I'm not worried too much about that. What I am worried about is that I don't want the amber chips and everything right at the back. We're gonna do some of that braiding with our three strands. So I am going to go back to the end of the thread here and we're gonna measure approximately 10 inches of our silk thread and we're going to tie a knot after approximately eight to ten inches depending on how long you want it to be so that extra cord is going to be there and we're going to do a knot just an overhand knot and let that go and give that nice tight pull if you struggle with knots i'll also show you how to use that knotting tool as we do the beading all but we're going to do it basically freehand so first thing take that first cord silk off tie a knot at the end to keep it from fraying and then a knot about eight to ten inches down so once you get ready to do your knotting and you have your crystals here, you can see I've already done three strands. We're gonna do four strands total, two per card of that Griffin silk. So you can do them in groups of one, you can do them in groups of three, and we'll go over how to do that. But I also wanna show you your options for knotting. This is a great beginner knotting because you don't need to be super, super close to the beads. So again, we have that initial knot at the very end to keep it from fraying. Then we went down about eight to 10 inches and tied another knot. Coming through then, I'm going to start, I have three different colors of the Potomac crystals in that nice kind of coppery topaz color with a vintage rose smoke topaz and light Colorado. I'm going to do a pattern of one crystal followed by one of my little amber chips followed by a crystal of the same color. Now, when you're learning to knot, you can go down, take the whole thing down. It's gonna stop at the knot that you already have there. And if you've done any sewing, it's pretty easy to get that knot close. I create a knot and a loop. I have my thumb press against the knot to keep it close to those beads. I bring the, or the cord here, that silk cord through that loop, and then still maintaining that little area close to the knot there, I pull that knot down close to the beads until it gets smaller and smaller, pushing it against the bead. Now again, we're not doing pearl knotting. You want it to move around a little bit, so this is a great starter. You can, if you want to, measure the next section that you're knotting or just kind of eyeball it. You create that overhand knot, look and make sure that you're about a quarter of an inch apart from the last knot. And then I'm gonna show you the next technique for how to do your knotting. If you get a beginner beading kit here from Potomac Beads, we have the beading all in it. The awl is great and very useful for multiple different types of beading, but I want to show you how it's used for knotting. And this can be used with pearls, this can be used um, with regular beads like we're doing here, gemstones. A lot of people think you can only knot pearls, that is a fallacy, you can knot anything. So we have our crystal and then our natural amber chip crystal here, and I'm going to make a loop just like I did with the last one, just that overhand loop. Bringing that loop and making it a little bit smaller, go ahead and stick your beading all in there. Push that beading all down towards the crystal. And you can see that I'm pulling the thread, which is making that loop smaller. I'm pressing with my finger now up towards the end. 
pulling the awl down in my hand so that it's just the very tip there and pulling that all out pulls that knot very close to it. If you wanna do the beading all on your first round to make sure that you have the knot exactly in place, you can grab your Potomac's ruler and measure exactly. Put that again, that loop into the awl, just that regular beading loop. Take it exactly where you want it to go on that thread. You can see you're moving it up and down because the loop is on that awl. Take it exactly where you want it to be, remove the awl and pull the thread tight. So after you get this, and practice. This is a great starter necklace to practice with. Doing these multi strands, you'll get really good. I'm going to continue doing a one chip variety, and then I did three, and then I did another one of three. So I'm doing two strands of three chips, two strands of one chip. I'm going the whole way using about uh, 15 inches of that knotting section, and then still leaving that eight inches on the end, and we're going to tie a knot, and I'll show you that coming up. So after you're done stringing your last strand and you're going in here and you are just taking that cord at the very end, leaving that eight to 10 inches or so, you're going to do a knot at the end, just like you did on the beginning side. And then just take your needle and cut that off the edge of the piece. Now I have a good 16 inches here left on my needle and thread. You wanna keep this with the packaging so you remember what the diameter is. So go ahead and grab your packaging and re-roll back up your silk thread and if you want to even write on it how much you have left so you can use this for a smaller project that's perfect you can put it back in the bag or sit it to the side that's just my little helpful hint with that same deal here i have another one where i ended because remember we used two of those silk cord and i'm going to go in and i'm going to cut off the end and i can even write times two on here or put that same one on the same end Keep those little scraps, even if they're six, 10 inches or so, you never know when you might want it for a pair of earrings even to hang down. Once all your strands are finished, it's gonna be time to connect your end. I'm gonna be using one of these figure eight lobster clasps at the end. And the first thing I wanna do is figure out where I want my four strands to hang and to lay and making sure that I don't have all of them ending right at the same place because it's gonna make it bulky. What I'm going to do is line them up, which I've already done, Take all four strands there, do an overhand knot, so just like you've been doing, but we're gonna overhand knot it and do a knot right after those four strands. Going to hold that up, make sure my four strands are in position on the other side, because I want them, rather than cascading, I want them to sit basically right on top of one another. Go ahead then also and tie your knot on the other side as well. So just that simple overhand knot, pulling all four strands through, and getting that all tied nicely on there. Then we're left with those four strands, which we're going to braid and attach to our clasp. Once we finish our sides, we're gonna keep it really simple and just have that organic look, rather than worrying about doing crimping or knotting or anything like that. All I did was a three strand braid. Yes, with four strands. So instead of just doing that overhand braid, I did literally two strands as one and held it together and then braid, braid, braid. You can twist it, you can braid it, you can keep them apart. And at the end with our clasp, all I'm doing is separating the two strands and literally tying it onto the clasp. I've touched it with a tiny little dab of glue and then I'm gonna take my thread burner and burn these silk edges down. Likewise on the other side, I got rid of two of the strands literally just with a scissors, cutting it down. We're gonna keep it again very organic, two strands of our silk here, another overhand knot, and I could attach to a split ring or a jump ring if I wanted to, but we're gonna make our loop for our clasp just out of the silk. Taking this loop then, I'm gonna leave myself another quarter of an inch, which we've been doing, pull those strands so that way they're nice and tight, right over top of the other. We're gonna dab another little tiny dab of glue here, cut these ends short, burn them down, both these and these. And then look, you have that nice organic feel. When you open up your clasp, you separate out your strands and it sits right inside of that nice antique copper figure eight clasp. Super simple, I can make that loop smaller if I want to, I can keep it bigger. And it's really easy to just knot on the last thing I have to do again is just burn those down so they're nice and flush against the ends. But then you have that fun layered natural amber necklace. 
Thanks so much for joining me in creating this natural amber chip knotted necklace. Remember, you can do this with a lot of beads. It just doesn't need to be pearls. And allowing yourself to have some grace for that spacing and for how tight you get the knot can really help you become better at that knotting technique. Remember also, if you do need any supplies and want to make one and haven't yet, go ahead and look below the video in the description and we'll put links there. As always, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. Stay tuned for our next inspirational video.